Grant and I met back in 1982 at a little pub at Western called The Spoke. I looked at my watch and I said, I've got to run. I have a five o'clock shift at Casey's. He said, can I have your number? I took out a pencil, wrote down my name, Michelle, my phone number, 434-5640, before you needed an area code, ripped it off, gave it to him, and said bye. I knew that I was going to marry Grant within a week. He knew that night. The lovely part of Grant and I is that we shared core values. We shared common interests, and we genuinely love to be together. We were married in 1987, um, and he passed in 2021, not even two months into his, um, his 60s. You know, if I went back and connected the dots, I think I saw signs in his 30s. He had this brilliant mind, and I think that he worked so hard, so very hard, to fight what was going on in his brain. I wish I could go back and have a conversation with him. Tell him, I wish you would have confided in me more, that something was happening, but he was probably so terrified. It really became evident in his late 40s, he wasn't forgetting to do something. He was forgetting how to do it. So I would be in the kitchen. I would ask him, could you go down and bring this to the pantry in the basement? He would go out the back door. I started to record on a piece of paper, years, symptoms, signs, or whatever. I had to get him to the doctor. It's a standard test. It measures the cognitive ability of the person taking the test. So initially you have to draw a clock. And uh, for someone with dementia, it'll look like uh, a very abstract clock. It'll look sometimes oval, sometimes it'll draw a square. And to put the hands in the correct position for 1110 is difficult for someone with dementia. The doctor said, oh, Michelle. And it, it struck me was, why is he saying, oh, Michelle? He should be saying, oh, Grant. And I go, why are you saying my name? He goes, you have no idea what's in store for you. You don't know until you know. You don't know how you're going to be pushed and pulled and how your heart's going to explode in so many ways. And I would never, ever want to take any of those days back. We got to care for him. We got to help him. We got to try to eliminate the fear in his eye when it creeps in. We never thought we'd end up in a condo, but with him not being able to maneuver the stairs, it became apparent we needed all one level. Grant was thinking, oh my God, what's going on? As much as we would assure him, this is our new place, he'd look out the window and he'd remember the old place. He goes, but what about Golfdale? And I said, we had to say goodbye to Golfdale after 19 years, honey. And I didn't want him to think we were moving because we wanted to keep him safe. I said, I wanted to show you the lake. We kind of had the happiest sick room. I'm huge into photos. So I knew that that I wanted to surround our large bedroom with photos of Grant. So when he was watching TV or could sit up and we could give him ice cream, he'd say, oh, yeah, I remember that. Well, it grew. It grew that we did it all around the perimeter and then I started doing a second row. We kind of go back for validation and we go back for solace and we go back for soothing to the memories that were made. Nothing prepares you for when they're gone. And going on without his presence and reshuffling your life, readjusting, sometimes it's just beyond comprehension. It's not linear. You don't go through the phase and then you're done. It's circular. It's all around. It comes at you at different times. And you just got to brace yourself because it's an emotional roller coaster. After he passed, there's certain obligatory things you need to do. Cancel all of his cards. And there's the wallet. And I went, oh, I don't want to go in the wallet. Obviously carried a picture of all the children and tucked inside there was the ripped off piece of paper 
from our first meeting on the campus at Western. And I looked at it and I sobbed. And I never knew. It's 1982. September of 1982, he kept it in his wallet. I guess I screamed out. The children came and they said, Mommy, you okay? And I said, Yes, I'm more than okay. I said, All these things I find of your father's just confirm that I chose right. I picked the right man. <laughs>